Hi, my name's Samuel and welcome to the Woodwork Experience. Today, we're talking about finishes. But in fact, selecting a finish is not as easy as finishing this cup of tea. When we're talking about finishes, we really need to take into account the purpose of the finish. What is it actually going to be doing? Is it an aesthetic feature? Is it for protection? Is the product going to be out in the weather? Are the moisture ratings it's going to be exposed to, do they change a lot seasonally? Because all of this needs to be considered when choosing your finish. So let's get back over there onto the computer and let's get into research of finishes. We are back over here at the workstation at the Woodwork Experience. If you've been finding these tutorials helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. The very first step you need to do is to open up your folio folder. From there, go through and open up the file template. Once you've opened up that file template, go up to file, move down to save a copy and save it as 08 research of finishes. After completing that, go through and change the title to research of finishes. Follow this step up by going up to the right hand corner and minimizing that page. Go back into your folio folder and open up the document 06, Research of Adhesives. From there, go to the very first table and select it including the minor heading that is just above it. After you've selected it, right click your mouse, move down to copy, and you can exit that document. Go back and reopen up your 08, research of finishes document and from there you are going to paste that information in this can be done by right clicking on the document and going down to the paste option it is important to change the title so remove the type bond 3 heading and change it to danish oil from there select and delete all of the information in your table except the headings all of the bolded text in that table must remain. This is what it should look like once you've done that. Continuing on, add the relevant information back into your table. When it's completed, it'll look a little bit like this. We're not going to waste too much time going over the information in this table because I believe that you understand how to fill it out from previous tables. But there are some points that we do need to touch on. So let's get into it. As you can see, we have a picture of the can of Danish oil. The pricing is for one liter and all my other pricings would be for one liter of that product. Availability simply states where you can get it. This time we've got Bunnings, Mitre 10 and Inspiration. Cure time is now, this one's split up into two different sections. You have how long it is to be touch dry, which means how long to you can touch it without it causing issues to the finish and how long for it to be fully cured. As you can see, with Danish oil, it is touch dry in one hour, but cured in eight. When discussing color, it's important to note if this finish is gonna change over time. For example, with oil-based products, they often yellow over time. When discussing application, you talk about how many layers needs to be applied and then how to apply it. For example, using a cotton applicator. Durability. We often will talk about a few different things in this section. So you're gonna talk about if it keeps the timber moist so it doesn't crack, but also does it add a protective layer? If it adds a protective layer, then state it because that is a beneficial product. Common uses, is it used indoors? Is it used outdoors? What other areas of timber or furniture making is this used? And then of course, clean up. How do you clean this up? For example, with Danish oil, you throw out the applicator or the rag and you use terps to clean off other surfaces. For the positives and negatives, once again, you're using the information from this table. And what you're gonna see here is that I've mentioned that it's reasonably inexpensive, linking back to pricing. It's readily available because I can get it in my local area from three different stores. It has a recoat in eight hours and is easy application. That's dealing specifically with application here. It's easy to clean up, which links directly back to the cleanup section. And of course, some other relevant information is that it is easy to fix up any scratches that may occur to the product. 
the negatives also link straight back to the table with stating that it yellows over time, which goes back to the color and that it does not add a protective layer other than of course, keeping that timber moist. From there, we discussed the suitability of the product. And for the first time, you're going to see that I've stated that this product is not suitable. So this product is not suitable for my project as it yellows over time. You've said what it is and why, and then uses on project. Well, this product isn't to be used on my project. Go through and copy and paste that table now another four times. For those tables, different finishes that you could research could be Danish oil or tongue oil, varnish, stains, French polish, or an epoxy finish. Other finishes, which are my personal favorite, include a water-based wipe on polyurethane because it's not going to yellow over time and uh, a hard wax oil. They are both very suitable, great products when it comes to major projects. Why? Because they're simple to apply and because any scratches are generally pretty easy to fix up and hide. Finally, we are back up to that ongoing evaluation. It is important to break down finishes into their various sections. For example, I might be using a hard wax oil on my tabletop, but painting my legs. This was very popular in dining tables around 2015. If you plan to use various finishes on different sections of the project, please make sure to go through and state that in this ongoing evaluation. My ongoing evaluation sounds a little like this. After completing my research, I've determined that the finishing qualities I require for the tabletop include a clear low sheen finish, as I wish to highlight the beauty of the natural timber. It must be easy to apply and clean up. Finally, I would like a product that is quick and simple to do touch up work on. I would like the finish to be available in my local area, and I would like to f the finish to cost less than $100 per liter. Finishes which are still being considered include hard wax oil, such as Osmo Poly X 3032, or a water-based wipe on polyurethane, such as Minwax wipe on poly. Now go through and repeat this statement for any of the other sections that you need to do in the ongoing evaluation. If you have any questions or concerns, please put them in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to make sure that you stay updated on the latest from the woodwork experience. See you in the next video.